You know, if you happen to be standing next to a crocodile, your first thought probably isn't how similar you are mm -hmm. to the crocodile. <laughs> Recently, I came across this new study that put a crocodile in a brain scanner and played a classical music. And I was like, you did what now? But it turns out this weird intersection of crocodiles and technology can teach us something pretty cool about ourselves. Like, when did we first develop the ability to perceive music? Over the years, we've figured out how our human brains process sound, like tones and music. For example, listen to this song. As you hear it, you process sound in a hierarchical way. First, you register the basic acoustic building blocks, like frequency, harmonics, the duration and loudness of notes. Next are the more complicated elements, like differentiating instruments and linking the sounds with stored memories. And then the most complex, like your behavioural response to the sound. And there's a relationship between brain structure and sound complexity. The more complex the sounds get, the more high order brain brain areas activate. But this isn't unique to our human brains. If I played this song to a bird, we'd see the same thing happen in their brain too. You and a songbird process music in a really similar way, which is kind of remarkable considering that on the tree of life we branched off from each other hundreds of millions of years ago, and our brains evolved down these two separate paths. But what if the ability to process music developed before all that? What if it came from a common ancestor? And this is where the crocodile comes in. Crocodiles are the oldest surviving relatives of modern birds, and ancient crocodiles that look pretty similar to the ones we know today. If we took a quick trip back in time, say 100 million years. There was a sort of a form of crocodile that we would say, oh, that's some kind of a crocodile. This is Dr. George Amato, the Director of Conservation Genomics for the American Museum of Natural History. While they wouldn't look exactly the same as crocodiles do today, they would have... An elongated snout, lots of teeth, um, the ability to to sort of be hidden at, at, at the shore underwater with most of your body underwater and just your nostrils and eyes up above. Now, crocodiles, birds, and humans all shared a common ancestor around 300 million years ago. It's a very sort of generic looking, you know, sort of thick limbed reptile that really then gave rise to mammals. Archosaurs, which are dinosaurs, and uh, crocodilians and birds, and then the other reptiles. This means they're a killer example to study if certain traits in our brains have been conserved over time. And in 2018, science has progressed far enough that we can scan the brains of live reptiles. I have been completely fascinated by your crocodile study that you were involved in since it came out. Researchers in Germany and South Africa work together to study how crocodiles respond to sound, both tones and music. Five young Nile crocodiles were restrained, placed in an fMRI machine, and exposed to different auditory stimuli. Simple chord noises and then complex sounds, like Bach's Brandenburg Concerto No. 4, which has been used before in studies with birds. The researchers found that simple tones activated their basic sensory areas, but complex sounds like music activated additional regions. So crocodiles process sound and music in a hierarchical way, just like humans and birds. It's been a pretty long time since crocodiles, humans and birds all branched off on the evolutionary tree. So your brain's ability to process music out of simple tones and decipher complex sounds is something that likely emerged at least 300 million years ago. Still, despite this commonality, I'm sure that you, an ancient giant crocodile and a songbird, will probably have different tastes in music. What do you think putting crocodiles in a brain scanning machine says about humanity? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to say, no, I will say, I think it demonstrates our endless curiosity to understand the natural world.